Senator McCann. Okay, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Uh, more than 40 per cent of students in the Northern Territory schools are Indigenous, uh, most of them more likely to attend government schools, and many of these students are high needs, often because of issues of disadvantage and poverty. Studies have found nearly 90 per cent of Indigenous students in Northern Territory schools suffer from hearing loss, which affects language development and impacts on learning. So imagine sitting at a school as a student with hearing loss and English as your second language. And sadly, that is the case for almost half of our Indigenous students at any given time. Yet we wonder why these children aren't learning. As a government, you wonder why the gap isn't closing, Minister. But how do you learn when you can't hear the teacher? So let me give you some more facts about the reality of Northern Territory schools and students. The Northern Territory has the largest proportion of children aged 0 to 8 years of any state or territory in Australia—14.1 per cent, compared to 11.5 per cent nationally. The Territory also has the largest proportion of Indigenous children—42 per cent, compared to 6 per cent nationally. Geographically, 48 per cent of all children aged 0 to 12 in the Territory live in remote areas, compared to 3 per cent nationally and over 37 per cent of NT government schools have a language background other than English. Very remote students live in relatively small, highly dispersed communities and homelands where families choose to remain living close to country and culture. In these areas, there is limited infrastructure, little or no economy and populations that do not use English as a first language. Uh, Minister, I have a number of questions in relation to the Northern Territory that I'd like to put to you, but just before I do, I do also have a letter here that I um, wish to table. It is a letter from the Education Minister, uh, Eva Lawler, who is urging the Senate uh, to delay this bill uh, to allow time to negotiate arrangements that are more favourable to Australia's most disadvantaged and vulnerable, vulnerable children. Uh, essentially, their key message is that jurisdictions have different capac capacities to fund their schools, and while it doesn't seem like much, uh, it's important to the Northern Territory. So I would like uh, leave to table this document. I'd like to table this document, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Is leave granted? So, sorry, we just need to seek leave, Senator McCarthy. Uh, I seek leave. Is leave granted, yeah. Minister? Chair, um, no, just for Senator McCarthy, the normal convention with tabling a document would be to um, share it with the parties before tabling. However, uh, on this occasion, given the description Senator McCarthy has given, I'm happy to grant leave. Thank you, Minister. Leave is granted. Mr. Uh, Minister, I have a number of questions that I'd uh, uh, like to put to you in terms of the Northern Territory. Uh, the Commonwealth, although the Commonwealth has uh, announced additional funding from 2018 to 2021 to assist Northern Territory government schools transition to the new school funding arrangements, the Territory's educational landscape and complexities will continue beyond 2021, Minister where additional funding will be needed to assist students with the highest needs. Minister, how will this bill uh, allow for review and continuous improvement in the funding model to consider changes in evidence and context? Minister. Um, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. And I, uh, I do refer Senator McCarthy in particular uh, to um, proposed uh, Amendment 7, uh, on uh, sheet GX167 uh, that does provide a, a very clear uh, mechanism for states and territories as well as other sectors uh, to be represented in a national school resourcing body uh, that will have particular tasks in relation to continued improvement of the funding model. Senator McCarthy. Minister, under section 22A of the bill, it states uh, states and territories will be required to at least uh, maintain their current levels uh, of per student funding with the regulations detailing how funding must be maintained for both government and non-government schools. Uh, it, it's understood that proposed penalties for failure uh, to meet maintenance of effort requirements will result in a further reduction of Commonwealth funding being applied to public schools. Is this the case? Minister. Uh, Senator, there is no reduction in funding uh, to, uh, to public schools. 
um, but, uh, but uh, under, uh, under the government's proposals. Um, there is indeed a uh, provision contained uh, to ensure that as the Commonwealth provides additional funding, uh, the states and territories don't simply take out their funding, leaving no net improvement. And this is intended as an accountability mechanism to ensure the states and territories do that, uh, of course, you know, noting the reality that the Commonwealth does not directly fund schools, government schools in the Northern Territory or indeed anywhere else around the country. Uh, and so this is a provision designed to ensure that we don't give with one hand and see any state or territory government take and pocket it with the other, but that actually additional funding equates to real additionality in schools. Senator McCarthy. Mr. I suppose I'm, I'm ju just trying to understand about the, the proposed penalties for failure to meet maintenance of effort requirements. Uh, can you expand a bit more on that? Minister. Chair, and uh, through you, Senator, the, uh, the intention is that, uh, is that the one lever uh, we have over states and territories uh, is indeed the funding we provide to those states and territories. Uh, so if the state or territory is not going to provide full pass-through of Commonwealth funding to increase the contribution to their state or territory schools, uh, then the Commonwealth would uh, have a power in the mechanism uh, to be able to withhold some future level of funding from that state or territory uh, in the hope that that would incentivise the state or territory to actually ensure that extra funding meant extra funding rather than extra Commonwealth funding simply being a cost shift from the state onto the Commonwealth. Senator McCarthy. Uh, Minister, the Commonwealth will also transition the calculation of loadings for students with a disability to be based on the nationally consistent collection of data on school students with disability, the NCCD. Uh, this data collection is in its infancy and, and inconsistencies between jurisdictions are, are of key concern. Uh, do, does the bill allow for improvements, Minister, to data accuracy prior to linking adjustment classifications to funding? Minister. Um, uh, thanks, Chair. Senator, uh, there's a, a joint working group that brings together the states, territories, non-government schooling sector and the Commonwealth uh, for continued enhancement of data accuracy uh, uh, and to work with all of those uh, collection authorities uh, to, uh, to ensure improvements of that data accuracy. Uh, as I think I told the Senate yesterday, uh, uh, the um, loadings uh, are essentially demand-driven loadings. Uh, so uh, if the collection of data in the Northern Territory uh, were to validly result uh, in uh, more students with disability being identified uh, and, uh, and or the students with a disability being identified at higher levels of adjustment need, uh, that would uh, result in additional funding flowing. Uh, so uh, our hope, our determination uh, is that uh, there is continued work done across the state's territories around uh, data accuracy. Uh, that is why we have uh, we've commissioned over a period of time uh, independent reports into the um, uh, collections that have been taking place over recent years, uh, and of course that is informing continuous uh, enhancements in terms of the moderation and other activities uh, to give confidence around the NCCD data. Senator McCarthy. Minister, um, you, you said today in question time uh, that uh, the Northern Territory, and I think you, your quote was that it was about growth in the Northern Territory and that um, your figures were, were, were going up to uh, one, from uh, 191 million up to 261 million, or equating to around $8,362 per student uh, to 11370 per student. Uh, the concern that the Northern Territory has is that uh, the funding proposal uh, will see federal funds cut to 20 per cent of the school resourcing standard, and currently the Northern Territory government schools receive 23 per cent of the uh, school resourcing standard. How did you arise, arrive at those figures? Minister. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, the government has been uh, fairly clear that, uh, that whilst the 20 per cent uh, figure uh, will be applied uh, in relation to 
Um, all of the other states and territories, we note the unique circumstances of the Northern Territory uh, and therefore uh, have provided for uh, some additional funding in the Northern Territory uh, to ensure that there is a continued uh, level of growth in terms of funding and support uh, for Northern Territory schools, uh, which of course is, uh, is included within the, uh, the figures that I quoted in question time today. Senator McCarthy. So, Minister, I, we, I'm just trying to understand, though, when we, when we look at remote schools, for example, Murujulu, Yundamu, uh, Manangrida, Yidakala, Boralula, uh, can you explain just what it will look like for those particular schools? Minister. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, I'll explain it in a couple of ways, uh, Senator. Um, you know, one is, of course, as I highlighted before, in, uh, in terms of actually what it looks like for those schools. That will be a matter for uh, the Northern Territory Minister, who's letter you tabled before, uh, as of course she has uh, uh, full autonomy or the Territory Government has full autonomy uh, in terms of how they distribute uh, the funding across Territory schools. Uh, however, um, uh, the quantum of funding that the Territory Government receives uh, is of course well and truly, as I highlighted in response to your earlier questions, uh, the highest in the nation on a per student basis um, and that is because that is because of the particular need and of course a loadings model uh, like this one that provides additional loadings for um, indigenous students for students of uh, social educational disadvantage for students from learning backgrounds other than English for students with a disability does provide uh, ultimately the largest level of funding on a per student basis uh, in the Northern Territory rightly reflecting the very particular needs uh, of the Territory. So in terms of the remote schools that, uh, that you identified, uh, whilst I don't offhand uh, know the circumstances of each of those schools, I imagine that each of them would, in terms of the funding that the Territory Government receives, uh, they would be, uh, of course, attracting significant levels of Indigenous student loading, significant levels of loadings in relation to uh, the, uh, the social educational disadvantage, significant loadings potentially in relation to language backgrounds uh, other than English, uh, uh, possibly uh, significant loadings in relation to students with disability uh, and probably in terms of them being remote schools or in fact certainly uh, the regional schools loading and probably the small schools loadings as well. Senator McCarthy. Uh, Minister, the, the Turnbull uh, government uh, put significant resources into the remote schools attendance strategy, um, and yet it seems on the one hand that uh, there's been significant funds going into that. You're putting resources into trying to get kids to schools in remote communities, but then on the other hand, um, that there is an understanding that the cuts to schools like local teachers, Indigenous education workers and investment in resources there is a major imbalance here. Can you um, can you respond to that, Minister? Uh, thanks, Chair, and certainly, Senator. Um, just to highlight support for Indigenous students, and, uh, and I draw your attention to the fact sheets that uh, the department has published in uh, in this regard. Um, uh, loading support for Indigenous students is estimated to increase from uh, around 962.6 uh, million dollars that was provided. Uh, over the previous four years of 2014 to 2017 inclusive, um, uh, increasing to some $1.4 billion uh, in loading support over the period 2018 to 2021. Uh, that's an increase uh, in support of around 46 per cent uh, and, of course, uh, a significant level uh, of those loadings, certainly on a pop, uh, per population basis or ratio, uh, the highest level in the country naturally goes to uh, the Northern Territory. Senator McCarthy. You see, this is where the, the it's just not adding up, Minister, because you're on one hand um, giving extraordinary figures uh, in terms of the investment, yet the outcome in terms of um, students and also the resourcing uh, doesn't reflect that. And even the letter uh, from the Education Minister in the Northern Territory also reflects reflects those concerns. Minister. Um, there are extraordinary sums of money involved in, uh, in school education. Uh, of course, the, uh, the 
thousands of students. Uh, indeed, around 213,504 students in 2018, we estimate, uh, will identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander <coughs> students and therefore attract uh, loading, uh, depending on the intensity of Indigenous population uh, in the schools that, uh, that they attend. Um, because of the scale of students, because of the number of schools, of course they end up being very significant numbers. Um, but importantly, there is also clear growth, clear application of needs-based principles, uh, and as I identified before, I gave the figures in relation to the growth rates across Northern Territory government schools uh, that are estimated to shift from $191 million in funding in 2017 um, up to $261 million by 2027, uh, as well as highlighting in particular uh, the, uh, the additional funding and budget resourcing uh, that the government is committed to, um, uh, uh, in essence, uh, outside of the model to, uh, to provide some $35.6 million um, uh, in the Northern Territory, uh, specifically recognising uh, the unique circumstances there, uh, uh, including the uniquely high starting share of the school and resource standard. Senator McCarthy. Minister, you, you refer to the unique circumstances, and I did uh, uh, mention earlier on the issues like uh, hearing problems, uh, which, which contributes uh, quite significantly to, to some of the learning difficulties, uh, especially uh, not only health-wise, but also in terms of language and the many different languages that are spoken uh, across the Northern Territory. Can you uh, point me to where in your figures uh, there is a focus on, whether it's in the disability area, I'm not sure, but uh, in terms of providing the support uh, so that uh, there is a guarantee uh, there is support for students with those sorts of uh, learning difficulties. Minister. Um, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, Senator, uh, as I went through some of the areas of, uh, of loadings that are applicable before, um, language backgrounds other than English uh, are one area of those loadings that, as I indicated, may be applicable uh, in certain remote communities uh, in the Northern Territory, uh, uh, in addition to all of the other loadings that, uh, that we spoke about. Um, uh, I would also uh, uh, highlight there, Senator, in relation to I think the first question you asked uh, in this string of questions about the nationally consistent collection of data for students with disability, um, uh, and the intent behind that is, of course, to provide um, for uh, appropriate levels of support that genuinely reflect the adjustment assistance that students need, uh, and obviously uh, issues in relation to hearing that may have impaired a student's learning over a period of time uh, are, of course, real challenges. Uh, in terms of identification uh, of hearing loss and hearing difficulties, uh, I'm advised the Department of Health uh, does fund and support a number of programs uh, in terms of hearing checks. Uh, and, uh, and they, of course, provide valuable assistance towards the identification of students uh, who may be able uh, to have hearing problems rectified, um, uh, as well as identifying students who uh, may indeed attract additional support under students with disability funding.